What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at Hardy Construction on Timberland.com, YouTube.com slash Hardy Construction, as well as Facebook.com slash The Hardy Construction with those comp and Made Sun Raisins California Natural. And today's film is When Animals Dream, uh, which was made in uh, 2014. 2014. When Animals Dream, 2014, Nar Dairin Droma, the original title, directed by. <laughs> Jonas Alexander Anby, starring <laughs> Sonia Sul, Lars Mikkelsen, and Sonia Richter. 16 year old Marie great. lives on a small island with her seriously ill mother and her father, who takes care of the family, but suddenly mysterious deaths happen and Marie can feel something strange happening to her body. Who wrote this? Get That's out of here. That's not even true. That's not even true. Somebody. Anyway, this is a, what, a ne- uh, Swedish film? A Nether- no, this was shot in the Netherlands. Danish. No, it's, it's Danish. <laughs> That's how, how... Oh, you white people. <laughs> Denmark. Denmark. So, um, what is this film about, Daniel? It's about... Uh, oh, um, that's not my name. Oh, I'm yes, Raisin's yes. Raisin, Raisin Cunt Sucker. Son. That's great. Uh, we really um, need to... Trust it, me, we really need it, to pad out this episode because this movie... Oof, it's about a, a girl who, I guess, is like a werewolf type of thing. Not really. Though. I don't. Yeah, I don't think she's a werewolf. You know, it is like a, a weirdo version of a werewolf. I assume like some sort of weird beast person. She she's a wolf a werewolf. Man. I guess she's she a wolf into woman. Werewolf when she's angry. Yeah. Is so she's like it the. It's like an Incredible Hulk or something, but she turns into a wolf person with hair. Like it's more of a. It's more of a genetic thing than it is a. a um, this is the next step. First, they right. go back their armpit it's, hair, it, leg hair. It's more of a genetic genetic this. thing than a curse. Luckily for them, they didn't have an old retired man who's blind who can instantly pick up that they're werewolf people and kill them within five minutes of the uh, plot being f- like found out. Because I'm making a That's late true. phases joke. There you go. Very good. So no, Sonia. Oh, good. Sonia Sewell, <laughs> who is Marie, right? That's the main girl of this film. Which yes, is funny because she she looks like a Danish version of um, the girl who played. The girl with the dragon tattoo. I don't know why I'm blanking on her name. She, she looks actually like, looks like my friend. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, this girl, right? Yeah. Okay, very good. I know who you're talking about. But I'm sure people are thrilled by that. She looks sort of like Rooney Mara, but like a, like a Danish version. But Rooney Mara is very hot. But this girl is sort of... They, they plain Jane her a lot in this film. She actually looks a lot sexier when she's a, a mutant monster in this film. But the film doesn't... <laughs> Uh, it isn't uh, those contacts do a lot for her. The reason why I picked this film because I remember seeing the poster for this movie. The poster is better than the movie, um, much like a lot of things. It, it has a very, it has a very. I'm going to talk about Nicholas Wending Refn for a second, but it has that color scheme where it's sort of. A, I don't know if, which poster you saw, what, but the, it's a, the guy from the other. Movie? Yes, that great movie. <laughs> anyway, uh, it has that sort of '80s sort of. Uh, Pop color vibe to it because I don't know which poster. I, I like. I like Have you the seen the poster for this? The poster. Yeah, oh no, right no, no. I'll get to that. But the poster for it is basically like a blue monochrome sort of color with her face and her eyes are these yellow sort of werewolf eyes, and the words are "When Animals Dream," but it's done in that cool sort of not '80s vibe, but it's just really like pop yellow colors. And uh, I saw the poster for this and I was like, "Oh wow, cool! That looks like a uh, yes, as fascinating as you sing. She looks like your friend." So I looked at the poster for this, and I was like, "Wow, damn! This looks pretty badass." And uh, I wanted to see that. I don't think I don't even remember if I saw the trailer. I saw it on that horror movie VOD website that sends says when movies are being released on video on right. demand. Right. And I was like, "Oh, cool!" So they gave it a big, good, a great review, a stunning review. They said, "Oh, this is one of the best uh, Swedish foreign horror movies." I was like, oh, really? Okay. So then oh, I uh, Swedish horror uh, movies <laughs> there must be two movies. But I saw the trailer for uh, actually. What's the other one? Let, let the right one in. I believe that's a Swedish one. Yeah, right? no, I could that's be wrong. a great that's movie. A f- that's a fantastic movie. Here's the problem. I mean, if they only have like four, and you say, "Oh, this is one of the best." Yeah. Like, <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, when I was watching the trailer for this, I saw. I was like, mm, "This sort of reminds me of um, Ginger Snaps." I was like, "Oh, this looks. This is probably like a snap, a Ginger Snaps, but European." And I was like, well, the European horror movies, for me, as far as I've seen, have been really good. Like, you know, Let the Right yeah. One In and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, this is going to... I was like, this is going to look really, really good. And it's going to have a European sensibility. Boy, was I wrong on one part it, of that. It does look good, though. 
<laughs> it, it's one of the best looking horror films I've ever seen. Um, I mean, just from the opening credits, because the opening credits sort of look like like the opening to a really good TV show, because it's just showing um, da- the... Um, it's like a seafaring town, like a small there, Danish. I mean, it looks really cool. Like it it's a really beautiful looking. Fi- yeah, it's it's a great it's a great looking film. It's it was filmed in a small Danish town called Agger, A G G E R. That's what it uh, says in the trivia on IMDb. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a beautiful. I mean, it's incredibly shot. Like I mean, I can't I can't stress enough how like, and this is, <laughs> trust me. Today I saw something that looked beautiful. And it was horrible. So this yeah. is not a horrible movie, but it's. It's almost lackluster in the way that it's the movie is told. It almost feels it's like basically it's, like a like a weird drama, like or something like right. But it, uh, but I don't even romantic f- drama. Right, I don't even feel like it's that dramatic enough. I mean, we have dramatic elements. She lives with her mother and father. Her father's played by um, what is it, Lar- Lars Mikkelsen. He's yeah. the brother of Mads Mikkelsen, who is Hannibal on. Uh, NBC, uh-huh. if you remember him, yeah, he he sort of looks like him. I guess I assume he's older because he has like thinning hair, but you can definitely see he sort of looks like his brother Mads Mikkelsen, and he's also the he plays the Russian president on House of Cards, and he's a real like bastard in that show. He's great in that show. I've never um, seen that, but uh, he's <laughs> he's uh, he plays her father, who's well to do, and they're taking care of their mother. I believe is her name is Moore. I believe played by Sonia Richter. Right. Um. They, no, they don't say her name. It's just, do they? Either way, she's not. I'm reading the credits. It says mother. The mother is a milf, um, and uh, yeah, they live. They all three of them. Milf. The three of them what live in this call house. That, uh, a wolf. A wolf. A wolf. wolf. A wolf. She's a wolf. A werewolf. She's I'd a like wolf. To fuck. <laughs> With two W's, uh, so she's uh, the mother. Looks like she has some either some accident or she has some sort of like or something, but she can't speak or she has something something weird that happened to her, um, and it's never really said what's happening. You figure over time what happens, but um, what mother werewolves can't no because she does move around. I think she's just catatonic because she went crazy. Yeah, I think so too because she's able to jump out of her chair at will towards the end of the film, and yeah. but it does feel like some sort of weird. Swedish D- Danish drama like it does feel like a European drama where there's like a little bit like this like this could have been a better miniseries than it was as a film do you I'm know what I mean frustrated with that guy Daniel one because he has my name and I think I carry it better oh, I thought your name was Raisin Box because the comedy well I'm talking my fantastic. alter ego I have an alter ego named Daniel um, I was confused because I didn't know if his name was different in the film because he kept yelling Daniel over and over but then he said oh I'm Felix no I'm Daniel I'm, I'm like what I, I was confused by who was Daniel no, there's who was a different, Felix there is a different character named Felix I know Felix is the guy that uh, is her boyfriend type right is the sort of boyfriend oh no 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 Felix was yeah no, Felix Daniel. Felix is the guy at the job right yeah Okay, so uh, well, so was Daniel. I, it was confusing because right, it was confusing. Same. Well, yeah, in a, in a way, um, the guy who plays Daniel's Jakob Ofter, bro, and he was um, he's sort of like the handsome guy that's you. I, I almost like expected him to be like the rapist that looks like a nice guy at the beginning, but he actually is a decent guy in the film. Um, yeah, it's sort decent. of decent, unrealistically decent. Yes, because I mean, in those type of films and these type of films like where it's a girl in a small town and everybody treats her like shit. The usual storyline is she meets an, a really nice guy who's handsome and incredibly nice, and then he turns out to be like some super rapist asshole. That's how it usually yeah. is. It doesn't happen in this one. It turns out everybody else is a piece of shit except for like, this guy. I feel like this is like. like a failed version of Spring. Yes, that right. Uh, uh, so Daniel is the nice guy, and there's a guy named Felix who uh, works with her, who's sort of the nice guy that is helping her out. But I think, I, I mean, I don't blame him for the course of action that he takes later on in the film. Uh, right. But like it's sort of an uh, it's sort of a, a um, black it's not black and white it's a very gray sort of um, space of morality in this film. So what the storyline is is that Sonia is growing up and she's noticing this weirdness with her mother and there's a town doctor that helps them and her parents are obviously keeping a secret from her and what we do later on, uh, she sees like her father shaving her mother's back and uh, hey you think her parents do it doggy style. <laughs> so um, so it's always so she's always gonna have that hair on her. I guess so. I mean, 
It it does definitely do that. Um, what is that? That uh, um, Ginger Snaps thing where the sexuality charges it. I guess because there is a scene. So she great. Has, so you can never get turned on. Like if you try to have sex, you're gonna have to deal with like a hair werewolf. Because when she uh, when uh, Marie has sex with Daniel later on in the film, like a big you know tuft of hair grows up her spine, which is very disturbing. Unless you're into hairy chicks, trust me, there's a lot of people that are into hairy girls. That's fine. Good for you if you like hairy that stuff. Hairy is fine, but not hairy on your spine. How your dare you judge women's <laughs> bodies? How dare you? You white and, cis, you white and cis male pops, pig, and it pops out when having sex, and then retreats, and then you grow fangs and claws. Like I said, that. you cis male pig. Is that the right <laughs> phrasing? I don't know which one I'm That's, saying. So I, yeah, no, that would be correct. So Doctor Larson, played by Stieg Hoffmeyer, is of a family <laughs> doctor, and I guess he's. There was an incident way back when. We're jumping around because this film is. Not that good. It's not horrible, but it's not that good enough for you know, you know, to say that it's a great movie. What, what else can I say? So the doctor has there been really treating her, else to say. and they <laughs> let's go goodbye, everybody. <laughs> they uh, revealed to the daughter uh, Marie that she's uh, there's something that she's got genetically from her mother, and it shows. You know, there is obviously um comparisons to let the right one in because that whole film dealing with the young vampire child yeah, and the her whole town seems to know no i get it. right right but the whole vampire child and, uh, child and the kid and remember the 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 serial killer and he dies because yeah. he was taking care of the vampire child and then the little kids presumably by the end of the film oh he's now going to turn out to be the older man that's taking care of the vampire child you know what i mean he's that's like a cycle cyclical thing so we this film was sort of a continuation in that front where the father must have had his own story with the mother, who was a werewolf, and she was attacked by a couple of guys. I think it was three guys on a boat, and uh, she killed the shit out of them, and the whole town knew because it's a small town. And uh, it, this is like the whole town from then on is like sort of, they understood what she did, but they must have known that it was some sort of supernatural weird shit that happened because well, the guys I mean, probably were... were they were. They do know because they were like checking on her, and also the doctor knew for certain. Right. So, but I assume they knew after. Like once it happened, they must have been like, "What the fuck caused these three guys to get smacked?" You know, cut into. Pe- I'm only assuming that's what happened to the original guys that must have assaulted the mother. So, right. um, uh, but the ca- the film is mostly focused on Marie, and she's just sort of sullen, quiet woman and she she looks like she has a chip on her shoulder because i guess because her mother's she is always RBF. sick and she yeah resting bitch face and she's always just by herself and she's oh, wait, wait, not wait, wait, wait. Uh, rbwwf so she is very much by herself and it's she's a hard character to connect to myself i didn't find myself connecting yeah, very funny h- hilarious so she's hard person to connect to um and but the thing is, you connect to her because everybody else is kind of being dicks to her, especially that big bald fuck. Um, what the fuck when they threw her in the thing of fish? Yeah, I think, but that was like a you know that was a hazing situation. Yeah, I don't like, agree with it, on. but there's a. Uh, I think his name was Espin, uh, the big guy that was the big bald guy that looks like fucking Jason Voorhees. Whatever. Right. <laughs> he's played by Gustav Diachter Geis, and he's uh, he's just like a dick, and he's obviously turned on by her. And she doesn't return his affection. And but they, I will say, it's very disturbing in this film. But if they had done this in a straight film to a guy when he's when he's sexually harassing her with a fish as a dick, that's comedy. In this movie, it's offensive, and I don't like it. But if it was done like in a Mr. Bean movie, like that'd be the fucking funniest scene ever in a movie. But in here, actually, um, there's this kid. Uh, oh, me no. and my friends were like trying to film like Uh-oh. a little a little movie we had made when we were like 16 or something. And hey, porno. Kid, it was. And now this kid at um, our school came running up to us and hit us with a fish. Like was, he had a, a giant fish. And he, like, was he just like a it. was he just like a random sushi chef and he was late no, to get to his restaurant? No, he was just like this jerk and he saw us and I guess they like got a fish and then came back and hit my friend. Whatever happened to that kid? He's still hitting people with he, fish. He nowadays? actually died. <laughs> He did? He's dead? <laughs> yeah, he died. What'd you do to him? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. 
I don't want to go to. Uh, uh, listen, I don't want to listen. I don't want to know nothing else. I'm like uh, I'm like Keith David in fucking. Uh, I have nothing. <laughs> I don't want to know. Sure, sure, Danny. Sure, um, we're gonna hear a fucking a uh, gavel from uh, Law and Order coming up right now. But anyway, so everybody, uh, everybody in the town, like I guess it's pretty much spearheaded by Esben, that bald fuck, because he wants to, like, you know, he, I guess he wants to be an alpha male and fuck her, but it doesn't work out. And when s- and the, r- the movie really starts. Um, gearing up once Marie finds out that she is genetically something else uh, from her mother's... Uh, she is not human. Right. And, um, I mean, there's not really much to say about this film. I mean, we're spoiling bits and pieces, but, I mean, as a suggestion for a film, it, it's a beautiful-looking movie, but there's the nothing that really is happening. The guy, Daniel, like, why would he... He just, like, met her. She must have been really good in bed because uh, that was like animal sex that he was in with her. But it's not, it's like a it's it's like a boring drama. It's like a regular drama that just happens to be peppered in supernatural elements. Like, and I, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, that that's what I felt watching. Like, if I was watching some sort of not that BBC shows are bad, but if I was just watching a BBC series and I wasn't expecting, you know. And it's like boring drama. It's just like a day in the life sort of. There was a movie that I saw. Um, about these dogs, it was, I thought it was going to be a movie about dogs killing people, and it is like a bun- it, it is a, it is a film it about was, dogs it was attacking. Homeward bound. Yeah, <laughs> so it was Michael J. Fox in it. Um, but anyway, so um, should have seen him eating that kibble everywhere. Ah, uh, very <laughs> tasteless joke. Uh, so anyway, um, in that movie, this dog like I was expecting the dogs to kill everybody, but it was really more like a character study. And then the dog shit happens at the end, but it was just such like oh like oh my god, I had to put up through all this regular drama bullshit like boring shit just to watch this <sighs> and i like you boring movie you ever see the movie bingo oh, bingo no what's that this is about this dog that like at the end i guess it like rescues the kid from like a burning building or something you sure you're not talking about fucking uh what the hell is the name of that dog the one with the, the bee one that it's plays not basketball no, that's Air Bud. I think we're talking about um, it's Bingo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is there such dog called Bingo? There is. It's called. Uh, I just typed it in Bingo Movie, nineteen ninety one. Oh American shit! Oh, you know what I'm thinking? Comedy. I'm thinking about that other dog. Um, what the hell is that dog? Oh man, oh, uh, Benji. Beethoven? I'm thinking Benji. No, no, this is Bingo. Bingo, he that sounds skateboards, horrible. He skateboards, he plays pinball, he does math homework. And you chose He's... to watch that movie? I was a kid. Oh, okay, I thought it was like last year you saw this or something. No, but it's a good movie, I would watch it again. Bingo, he's probably like, whatever. So anyway, uh, the movie is slow slow going, um, this is a short ass episode. I mean, okay, so let's just at least put some sort of meat into this film for people that did watch it. Meat. What what did you what did you get out of this movie? Like, what were, were there any sort of deeper meanings in this film that you like? Well, thought? I got that okay. I would like to go to Denmark and see okay. it. Okay, um, and I got that uh, men are really stupid and think with their penis too much. Because I mean, they do that. Like, uh, it, what's weird? I mean, with the for the most part, wolf movies. I think. Um, because this isn't really a wolf movie. It's not a werewolf movie. It's not a, a, a wolfman movie either. I mean, it does have. There is elements of it in the film, and that's basically what the main crux is at the very end. But like a lot of wolf movies, have to deal with sexuality, and I think it's because you know the animal side of people, and you know having sex turns you into a different person. It alters you and it changes your life forever. Think about it. Like if you really think about it as a woman. Like, when they, I'm sure I brought this shit up plenty of times before, but when a woman has, like, first time she has to have sex with a guy or, or whoever else, I assume, I think right. it's mostly for guys, they have to go see a um, gynecologist from then on because they have to check if, you know, that that frequent, frequent sex can cause a whole bunch of cancerous shit in their bodies, you know what I mean? Right. So it shows you, like, in this movie... Like that, like literally, when, once a woman begins to have sex with a guy or whoever else, their bodies are like almost self-destructing. It's like bizarre, like how that how life works unpleasant. out like that. It is. It sounds very unpleasant. Um, like guys, we don't have to worry about getting a finger our asses by choice until we, you know, like fifty years old, so we can check for you know um, stuff like that for like uh, um, whatever that that cancer is. But women, once they start having sex, then they have that's like a whole other thing, and then periods and shit like that. So I could understand why there's more wolves 
uh, and you know women finding more about finding out more about their bodies than usual you know what i mean that's probably why they right. those are so put together because you literally are turning into something else and that's probably like much much more of a clearer connection well, you know, between women be and more werewolves open minded i'm going to with that in mind, I'm going to be more open-minded, and I'm going to have sex with a werewolf girl. There you go. <laughs> you find your rabies on your nuts. Um, <laughs> I, I I thought it was okay. It wasn't enough that I liked it. I thought it was okay. I thought it looked good. Um, I thought the acting was good. I, I think Lars Mikkelsen is a pretty good actor. Um, the guy who played the father. His name is Thor yeah. in the movie. That's cool. Um, Thor. Uh, he was good. The mother was hot for a invalid. Um, everybody <laughs> else was everybody else that played like the guy who played uh, Esben, the jerk off guy, the bald guy. He was I good at playing it. a dick. Yeah, he was. He's good at that though. Um, he really looks like the guy who played Jason and Jason. Um, Daniel with, was he versus Freddy. Me of the guy that plays Thor in um, the movie Thor. Very good. Um, I, I I didn't think it was the greatest movie. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it, honestly. I mean, I would recommend it if you want to see a good-looking f- sort of foreign film that has horror elements, but it's not really a horror film. Like even the parts when they're when they're bugging her, and then she kills that guy off his motorcycle or his what is it? What are they wearing? Driving vipers or mopeds or they're something? Like v- Vespas or something. Vespas, right? And she like kills him. I was watching the movie with the lights on, but the scene was in dark, and I didn't even see what the fuck happened. So once like there's scenes in the darkness, just watch it in a room that has no lights. And um, I mean, listen, uh, I try to film. I try to fill time in this episode, but it's not really worth. Yeah, there's really not talking much, much. yeah it's, it's it's basically in the short in the short of it is it's a a bbc european sort of drama that has peppered horror elements and it's not graphic horror um she the makeup effects of her is okay i love the contact lenses she looks I awesome like, i actually like the design she looks uh no the design is fine she looks awesome as a as the wolf woman it's not really a full wolf woman it's more like a wild woman sort of look with sort of uh She's a wild wolf. Wild there you go. Wild wolf. Um, it is satisfying when she when those people are dealt with at the end on the on the um, boat because you're pissed off at that one big fat guy that obviously killed her mother by drowning her in a tub. Um, I, d- I don't really have anything else to say. I would give this film a five just because it looks really good and everybody's acting is pretty good across the board. Um, okay. But it's not something I would say. Hey, if you love werewolf movies, you got to see this film. So, like, once I heard, once I read that review that it was one of the best ones, I was like, no, 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 I don't think so. Yeah, this that's is just not like true at all. it's bullshit. Um, I'll give it a five out of ten. Um, accosting a, a young woman in a locker room and forcing her to see your fish genitals. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give it. Um, I agree with you. No, it's better than a five. Because it does, it does look good, and the acting is good. So That's why I gave it five. I would give it a zero if it was bad. I'm gonna give it a six out of ten. Um, you know, being in love with a person that you just met, basically, or that you barely know, even though she's like a horrifying werewolf monster who just killed a bunch of people that you know. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you take your girl, like your wolf girl, and jump off the boat and swim back to shore and act like nothing happened? But I guess, well, I mean, what are they going to fucking get on that boat and just drive, you know, uh, have it they're gonna, go they're somewhere? They're going to the seven seas. With dead bodies on it? Get out of here! All right, with that, Danny, what's the final word? Bazooki. The horror deconstruction.